Let's talk about bioharmonic tonic. Mm. I mean, we talk a lot about the soil, we've done a lot of things, but tell us what is in it. Give us you and the product. Well, the product, bioharmonic tonic, uh, first of all, you know, the microbials, you know, it's got a broad diversity of naturally occurring microbes to affect uh, a plant's uh, rooting, to affect the growth, to affect the fruiting and maturing and flowering. And this is, you know, very well documented, well-known science, as you know, being yeah. soil king, the, the <laughs> microbiology of the soil. Now, the interesting thing that we've done is add a couple of things which tie into my background in the Amazon rainforest. We have three botanicals that we imprint into this microbial solution. There's a uh, camu camu, uh, which is really important for a variety of reasons. It's it's got a lot of polyphenols in it. It's recognized as the world's greatest concentration of vitamin C coming from nature. So when we introduce that into the microbials, in a sense, we're looking to educate the microbes, uh, because the microbes in the soil are all about the plant growth, to educate the microbes like, hey, look at the imprint from the highest concentration of life energy on Earth and the plants that are growing there. For me, a lot of it always kind of comes back to natural farming and what I know there and when we're talking mm -hmm. about diversity, right? So it's not just one collection from one spot, but you're actually really collecting a certain plant from one area, which is totally different than the other yeah. plant from the other area, and mm -hmm. again, totally different from your third one. And it comes with whatever mm -hmm. soil-based organisms and right. things are imprinted there, right, that are right. lying dormant. Now they're introduced and they become part of this whole diversity of expression. Yeah. Very cool. And then the last thing we do, you know, is the, the gemstone imprint. Right. So we've tested about 600 different stones to see which one is going to provide a harmonic that would be uh, the best for soil-based organisms, for the soil microbiology we're looking to create. We end up with uh, an amethyst chrysoprase, an opalite, and what that does is create a harmonic and quartz crystal can actually receive and transmit waveform. Yeah. Okay, and that's why it was used yeah. in the radios, transmitting radio waves. And we know now that the microbes and the bacteria are communicating, you know, once they, they get that quorum sensing a certain density of population, they begin to communicate one with the other using a chemical signaling. So they're putting out this chemical signaling, communicating with each other, and they're going into the soil and they're finding reserves of these minerals and bringing them back to the plant and making them available. All this activity is going on. And if the microbes are communicating with each other, if we can create a harmonic field in the soil to make that job much more efficient and easy, instead of having an erratic uh, kind of situation there, uh, which is becoming more and more erratic. You're giving you know. them cell phones. Well, you got cell phones, <laughs> you have, you know, now you got 5G coming, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. electromagnetic. Yeah, you just uh, launch 5G in the soil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's Kim's gonna stuff. be a that's very, this kind of frequencies pass right through the plant. They pass right through us, and they disturb things, you know, at the cellular level, you know, which you have happy cellular division things going on. Now you've got this strange harmonic coming through there, with all electromagnetic uh, frequencies and it disturbs that, it makes it more difficult. So we'd like to harmonize that in the soil so these, these microbes can just communicate effectively. And now we know they're communicating with bacteria in the plant. The bacteria in the plant is communicating with the bacteria exactly. in the soil. It's a chemically induced signal of yeah. uh, frequency that's going and, on there. And that's, those signals are both cooperative and competitive. You know, it's, the, yeah, the microbes right. are working together in certain yeah. ways, and they're also inhibiting other microbes that may be causing damage. So we want to make that communication as clear as possible so that if a pathogen shows up, our microbial community has the ability to communicate in ways and release signals that will outcompete or even destroy whatever pathogens may show up. You're almost well like commuting put, an immune system yeah. Yeah. And for the soil. Definitely. That's so cool. Tell us more about the relationship of the farmer and the plant and the microbes. There you go. You know, now that we understand that the microbes are actually communicating with each other in the soil, uh, and they're communicating with the microbes in the plant, right? We have this communication going on. We know that we're full of microbes you know, as humans, and we have more microbes than we have cells. And the 
focus in human health now is so much on the probiotics, which are microbials, bacteria. And we have good bacteria, bad bacteria. The idea is to get the good bacteria to you know, outcompete the bad bacteria. We have you know, an extraordinary diversity of microbes, and we used to have a lot more, but we had a whole generation that's grown up on antibiotics, and that's a major cause of concern for ongoing degenerative disease that we see now because people's microbiome, their bacteria, has been wiped out in a lot of cases. Yeah. And these bacteria serve a lot of purposes. They open up metabolic pathways of communication between organs and systems. So if I've got a, a pancreas that isn't operating properly, and so my body's sending signals, hey pancreas, we need to you know, be uh, releasing insulin, all of that. If I don't have the microbes there, that actually have the metabolic pathway of communication, nothing happens. Right. And you get into these degenerative situations. So introducing the probiotics of bacteria into our gut is really important. So the, the diversity of microbes we have, they're communicating the same way. Same way. They have that chemical That's communication. So, yes, it's awesome. so when a grower is in the garden, now you have the yeah. opportunity where the microbes in the soil communicating with the plant, yeah. now you've got the triad of communication going on. Totally. Let's talk about Amazon, John. Amazon, where'd you come from like, to get to this point? <laughs> this isn't a new product. I think I met yeah. you in 2015. Uh, and that's just a short amount of time from where John was in history to where John is sitting here right now. Yeah. Let's elaborate a little bit on that. I grew cannabis the first time in 1970. And, uh, and then during uh, you know, these 18 years of just working with Amazonian plants, bringing in tons of stuff from South America, I sold that company about eight years ago and really began to focus exclusively on cannabis as a medicinal plant for its therapeutic value, you know, its full range of cannabinoid profiles and things. I spent some time in Israel with uh, Dedi Miri over there at the Haifa, up in Haifa, the Technon Institute. And, um, so I've been very fortunate to meet really the top, the top people in cannabinoid uh, medicine. Oh, so then the idea was, well, how, with cannabis, how do we uh, look at the way we grow cannabis, the intentionality of it, the specific cultivars we're dealing with, if we're looking to have a specific therapeutic outcome. And so that's, and, and naturally when, you're, when you start thinking that way, since we're not harvesting, I love to harvest things wild in the rainforest, right? Because you're collecting the strongest of the species by definition. If it weren't, it wouldn't have survived all the ecological challenge. So it's great when you can harvest wild. When you're cultivating, I say, well, that's, that's what took me down this path. All right, it starts in the soil, you know, as you know, soil king. It starts in the soil. How do we get the right soil? How do we, you know, what's the interface of activity going on there? How does this all influence? And that's uh, the short version of what, what, what brought us together here. And here we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is great. Tied together by dirt. <laughs> and as we know, there's, of course, a variety of ways to grow things. I mean, you can spike the soil with, you know, uh, synthetic nutrients to try to force the plant to do something. And the consciousness, you know, that we all share and I appreciate so much and what you've been doing a long time and what you've been doing a long time is the consciousness of how do we allow the plant to express itself at its maximum value, you know? How do we facilitate that activity? And that's where it gets really exciting to me from a, from a therapeutic standpoint, because that's where the real therapy uh, comes from, that honor and respect of that whole cycle. This is gold! <laughs> Holy moly! I mean, you have not experienced this on this level. That man just gave it to me. <laughs>